Well, a glimmer of hope was shown earlier today that Omoyele Shore, convener of the Revolution Now protest, might be released by his uh, lawyer, Femi Falano San. But what we know now is that he is still not released, even though his bail conditions have been met. Phyllis indicates it's not going anywhere yet. And of course, we know that there was a mild drama in court when the case came up before it was adjourned. Stay with me in the studio are Ugo Chukui Kako, thank you very much, and Raymond Nkanebe, thank you very much, gentlemen. Okay. Bail has been granted. We've been on this issue forever, but this latest development seems to be at loggerheads with what we know. Bail was granted. The conditions were met. Lawyer expressed optimism. We get feelers that now they went to the place where he's being held and they were told they came in too late. Is that the reason? But that's the reason that they gave us. That's the reason that they gave us. And uh, for me, it's, it's not a good enough reason. All right. Uh, we've been at this thing. I remember the last time I was here, this was part of what we talked about. And that was the day that it was Lee that was meant to go. And I told you, following, I'm an analyst, so I said, following what we've seen in the past, the guy will be there. And it's like more than a month, I'm back here, he stayed there, and they just, they, they called, they've met all the bail condition, and we're still having the same issue. So for me, uh, it makes a mockery of both the judicial process, uh, both the process of uh, rule of law. No, no, but before we go that route, they, they said the reason he was not released okay. was because they've closed. There seemed to be nobody on the ground to process his release. So aren't you optimistic by this time tomorrow? We'll probably have Shore sitting with us. I'm not optimistic. You know I'm not optimistic? Why the people Shore show, show, show lawyer is a son. You understand court processes. You understand how to file in the document or whatever it needs to file in at the right time, at the right moment. So this is not the first time. It's not it's not it's not didn't just leave uh, the Nigeria law, uh, law uh, campus for VI to go and do this. He has been doing this thing for years. So uh, there is something fishy still going on, right? Because this young man, the bail condition has been met, right? So uh, they can't use the technicality of he came in maybe five minutes, ten minutes late to just to zone everybody out and still keep him, make sure that he sleeps uh, at DSS custody tonight. But tomorrow they can see they can just trump up under under crazy charge and still keep him there. And so for me, I'm not I'm not I'm not optimistic, right? Because uh, we've seen this thing happen over and over again in this country where where, where uh, uh, people that are opposite government, or people maybe opposition, or people that are critical of government to a certain level, you know, uh, get them, keep them in, keep them in prison for a long time. They keep going to court. They keep uh, asking the court to, uh, to get them out and the rest of them. Nothing happens. So for me, I, I'm not optimistic till it comes out. Uh, no, I hope it's not a strategy. Why did it take so long to perfect his bail condition? This was a man who a lot of persons came out to speak against. Um, his incarceration, and then the court granted him bail. There were loads of prominent Nigerians who could have come out to stand as shorties for him. But it seems to have taken forever for that to happen. Why do you think this is the case? Well, um, it's one thing for people to be at your back and the heat of the moment, and another thing for them to still be with you when push comes to shore. I remember things fall apart when Okonkwo uh, when Okonkwo killed the white man, he had told Umofa people would join him. But then when he killed the white man, he said he heard from the background, they were asking, why did he kill him? And then he said, Umofa would not go to war. You understand? So why Shuwari was revolution now, people were like, yes, yes. And then when he was, he has, he was apprehended by the states, you saw all those uh, all the support group with that, and some persons are uh, why is he why is he even this? And we saw some persons even come out to say that why would he even do what he intended or what he planned doing? So I see it as a case of um, the what was the word now? Um, the, the the typical human nature of of of, of changing with the tide with the, with the tide of events. There is there was a mild drama in court today. I'm sure you both uh, were. Uh, of it. Before we get there, I want to ask about the lack of access to his client, Fermi Falano. That was one of the issues he raised yeah. uh, today for asking the courts, how am I supposed to, you know, 
defend my client when I don't have access to him, mm -hmm. and he hasn't had access, and neither has the family had access uh, to him. What, why is this? Because this is Nigeria. This is Nigeria. You said yourself that Mr. Falano is someone who knows the law. Knows Couldn't the law. he have found a way to get access to his clients? It comes back to what I'm saying. This is Nigeria. Like the urban philosopher Far said, this is Nigeria. So what we'll, ha what we'll have is, is uh, like say, the capital of any harness. Right? People have made up their mind to disobey court processes. People have made up their mind to, you know, to behave in a way that does not favor anybody. Right? So, see, it's sad. Like, I've gotten tired of talking about this over and over again. Because the truth is that the law is, the law is everybody's last hope. All right? So if you feel that somebody has done something bad to you, something grievous or the rest of them, you can go to court and you trust the court to take action. I trust everything to fall in place. You trust the state itself to make sure that what the court has said comes into effect. But here, we are seeing, we are seeing a situation where, where the instrumental, instrumentality of the state is being used against a citizen. So uh, it shows you that what is happening to Showare is not just, is, is beyond. There are powers that be in Abuja, in Asoro, that are not OK with that young man uh, you know, having access to his lawyers, uh, to, to his family. We saw that happen with Ezakzaki, right? Uh, Abiri was in DSS for more than two years. Nobody, nobody, nobody knew where he was. So Abiri was a journal journalist right, from Bayasa State. So what we're seeing in this country is, 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 the, is the state attempt, 100%, state attempt to muzzle not just the opposition, but anybody that is critical of this government. And it does not all go well. I think they should go and read their history book. It, was not, it wasn't successful in Russia. It wasn't successful in, 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 in it wasn't successful in France. It wasn't successful in anywhere. So if you feel that what you can do is to use the instrumentality of the state to keep intimidating people, to keep intimidating people, a day will come where the people themselves will ask you that, why do you want to elect you? If we don't take you out through ballot, we'll find another way to say, okay, we don't want this thing. We want you to, want us to have a conversation. We've seen, we've seen, we've seen, we've seen protests across the world, Lebanon, Hong Kong, and rest of them. People are saying so. Also, it brings into question that for Nigerians. When we just ask ourselves that we are tired of this, and like you said, people moved on. People were asking, why was show we're doing this thing? It doesn't make sense. It's not about show, it's about the country. If things are not done right, we have a responsibility. But we're in a country where nobody cares. Everybody's like, oh man, for himself. So the day we start asking ourselves questions as a country and start demanding things that are supposed to be done right as active citizens, then things will start to shape up. But if not, when, because it's just one man, it's show, they can easily intimidate him. But if people consistently say, okay, this is what we demand, this is what we ask for, this is the, the, because protest, demand, activism, they are part of the democratic process. And it must be key. So if they don't get it today, maybe they'll get it in next year. But the thing is that the state cannot crush all of us. It cannot crush our, our collective spirit as citizens. So it's for us to start asking questions. Because for a lawyer as, as big as uh, uh, Falana, if they can easily intimidate him, who is your lawyer? I, I, I well, wouldn't well, agree well, that he has let, been let intimidated, though. But let me, let me, OK. No, so he has been intimidated because he has not been seeing his client. So what is that? What they, they've used intimidation to make sure that he himself, Femi Falana, son, he didn't start yesterday to practice. He did not have access to his client. So he, he, that's, that's the highest level of intimidation. Well, I was just going to say a thing or two. You see, from my relationship, I think we have a problem of bureaucracy. From my relationship with, with detention centers, you usually have issues. Most times, you go to court, your client is granted bail, right? But then before you now go around the, pri the, uh, the prison orders to get your client, it takes another two to three days. So I'm not surprised it's also playing in the... Um, in the Shore case. And it doesn't matter who you are. There is just this system that has been laid down to just make very simple things look so, so cumbersome. And I believe that's what is playing, playing out in the Shore case. And also, I, we've only heard from Falano saying that his client has, made, has met the conditions. We've not heard the state saying that, yes, he has met those but conditions. But the court belief went from what not, we heard. We've not heard from the court. I mean, as at today's proceedings, or yes, yesterday, today's. Falano was saying, our client has met all the conditions. We've not heard any official, we've not heard from the court or the court registrar affirming the fact that he, he has met all those conditions. But can, can a bailiff I just, I just go to, to the detention center without the clearance of the court? Is that possible? Of, uh, well, uh, I don't think, it, it's not possible. OK, it's so possible. Let, let, let's, let's move on and take a look at the mild drama. I'm told we have little time. Okay. The prosecution came up with masking witnesses to, you know, uh, testify against Omoyel Shaware and uh, his co-defendant. And Falano raised an issue about this. Even the court didn't seem to be aware of the choice of the prosecution 
to mask their weakness. What's your take on that? Well, it was a, it was a grave error of procedure. And I, uh, it's good to know that the Honorable Justice um, um, Ojuku um, admonished the act of the registrar. Who, but seemed to allow it to continue. Who, no, not. He said he's going to rule on the issue of the mask. He's going to rule on that, okay. right? Because Falano has objected. And once an, when there's an objection to a procedure, the court has to rule and determine which way, uh, to what, to, what to actually apply. So it's an, it's an error of procedure for the, because a, the witness protection program is, uh, our laws on witness protection is still very young. We don't have a, we don't have a formal legislation um, uh, of witness protection. But then we, we borrow from practices in other parts of the country where the judge has a very central role to play in that process. The judge, the attorney general of the federation, um, the counsel for both sides, all sides should be carried along in so the process. Shouldn't the prosecution so, have known this? Shouldn't they be aware? They, they are not newbies. They're course, as good as their colleagues course, on the of side of, of the defense. Shouldn't they have known that this is a breach of court process? Uh, I'm, I'm really surprised that letter SAM for the prosecution. Uh, uh, you know, this man, SAN, uh, could um, subscribe to such kind of practice. I mean, they are both brother sakes in the bar, and he, I thought he would have accorded his brother sake the respect of, okay, this, this is what we are working because I understand in a, a case of that nature warrants witness protection. I understand it, it warrants, but then the process leading to that should be done in good faith, and all parties should also have been carried along. I see, I, I still don't understand why there is need for witness protection. So, why is not a terrorist? Nobody found arms or ammunition with Shore. Shore is not a member of an MS-13 gang. Shore is not a member of Boko Haram. What again, should I continue? So there is, I don't understand in God's green earth why you are trying to use witness protection against, against someone that his only right is just to demand, he's, he's only, uh, 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 what he has done wrong is just that he demand, he, he asks for what is right as a citizen, as an active citizen. So I don't understand. It does well, not I make, think it, because it does, Shore it make is sense. Person... And also, and also, my, yeah, no, also and also, what is happening is very shady. What is happening is very shady. And like you said, the son, why, why, why the son out of a sudden, the person that is for the prosecution, out of a sudden, okay, this process, without even telling, without even telling the defense counsel. So for me, there's a lot of shady things going on here. And like I say, it keeps making a mockery of what we have as a democracy. And the thing is this, anybody that thinks that this is okay because it happened to show her, no, Allah. what happened to, what, when, after rain comes the sun. So it's turn by turn. I hope everybody will get a, a good, a, a good group you of You wanted it. to say something? Yeah, I was going to say, uh, for me, I believe a case of that nature demands witness protection because show is a person who is believed to have a court following in the streets of the country, among, very, uh, very importantly, among the youths. So if persons who, um, who come to testify for the state are not given that protection, one, it might serve to scare persons from coming to testify for the state, and then if they're not protected, it will put them in grave risk of persons of their being attacked by persons who, as, who have sentiment for revolution now and for Shawere as a person. So uh, in my line of practice, or my experience of practice, a case of that nature warrants witnesses that will testify for the state to be protected. But the court has to okay this. Of course, the process leading to that ought to be followed. But we, didn't, we didn't see this for exactly. We didn't see the witness protection. Should I continue? All the positions that looted our money in this country, there was no witness protection. You show whether there's an ordinary journalist in New York but all the all the all the teams. You are, call all, him all, an ordinary journalist. He, he calls him with a man with a strong following. He, he, so he, 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 which he, one do we he, take? He is a journalist. Okay. And that contested election are lost very, very well. But it does not mean that we've seen politicians go to court and being tried. The people that came out to as witness, nobody has killed them. So if whatever the state is trying to do to get this guy to stay in prison, it does it doesn't look good. That is my own because what we've seen is a calculated attempt, strategic. Well, let's see. Well, if I just say something, okay. uh, the fact that witnesses are given protection does not enhance the case of the person they are testifying for. Maybe I should just put that in context. It mm -hmm. does not enhance their case. Every witness will be cross-examined. So on if you the, like, put on them the in, strength of the evidence. Of the, of that the they evidence. Are so it does not enhance the case of prosecution in any way at all. It's in the full interest of the person who is coming to testify as a witness. Okay. I guess that's where we're going to stop it yeah, and okay. look forward to him being released tomorrow surely, since surely. Uh, they say uh, he has met all the conditions. Be a bit more hopeful. I'm not hopeful. This is Nigeria. <laughs> Thank you so much, gentlemen, for Thank your time. You. Thank you for having us. We'll go on a short break for our PLOS package. And when we return, I will give my take. Just stay with us.
The Nigerian Senate has confirmed the appointment of former Deputy Governor of Edo State, Pius Odubu, as Chairman of Niger Delta Development Commission, NDC. The Senate also confirmed the nomination of Bernard Okumakba as the Commission's Managing Director, Otto Bong Idem as its Executive Director for Projects, and Maxo Oko as the Executive Director for Finance. Twelve other state representatives were also confirmed. However, the state representatives from River State, Joy Nunye, was not confirmed. Lawmakers said she did not honor the invitation sent to her by the committee. The committee considered nominees qualified to serve on the governing board of the Niger Theatre Development Commission and recommended the following nominees for the confirmation of the Senate. One, Dr. Pius Udubu as chairman of the governing board of Niger Delta Development Commission. Two, Mr. Bernard O. Okumagba as managing director of Niger Delta Development Commission. Three, engineer Odbong Endem as executive director of projects of the Niger Delta Development Commission. Four, Maxwell Oko as executive director Finance Administration of the Niger Data Development Commission. Five, Prophet Jones Irue as member representing Delta State on the governing board of Niger Data Development Commission. What we pray for is for these nominees that are entrusted with uh, management of the NDDC to keep the trust, to discharge the responsibilities bestowed on them by the NDDC Act to ensure that the people of Niger Delta get value for money, that all the development uh, projects are projects that will change the lives of the people, of the people for the better. As, as I said at the beginning, we have to do our oversight. We must ensure that every quabo counts. We must ensure value for money. Uh, unfortunately, the uh, NDDC uh, has established some kind of undesirable reputation. And that is why the president had to set up uh, the, to call for the probe of what has happened in the past. I think going forward, we must ensure that we remain alert as a, as a legislature because it is our responsibility to ensure that public funds are properly put to use. While we wish uh, this very good team the best in, the, in their endeavor, that they, uh, they stay committed to the ideals for which the NDDC was set up in the first place. The questions are fair, considering the whispers that has filtered into the media space. The government has come to clear the air that there is no rift between the president and his deputy. Or do they have an antecedent of trust? What is going on or not? In this case, the law is the law. Several learned legal practitioners have said the president ought to have written the National Assembly considering his visit is a private one and not in his capacity as the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. This is not a good commentary on the leadership being provided for this country. The President's advisers should know better. Nigeria is bigger than a single individual no matter his status. This government should set good precedents, follow the rule of law in all, I repeat, in all its conducts to get credibility. Thank you for watching the program tonight. As always, we would love to get your feedback. Please share them using any of our social media handles. Until I see you again, please be well.